Well, good morning, guys. Uh, so as you know, I'm still a couple hours away from home, and this is gonna be a little bit different video. So I was planning to go fishing today, but it is incredibly windy outside still. So I stopped at this car museum. Um, as you guys know, I do a lot of truck camping, and the truck's got a little bit of work done too at a cam and stuff like that. I've always been pretty into cars. I've had a few decent ones. I don't have any hot rods right now. I've got the couple motorcycles that you guys are gonna see more of this year. Um, but I'm gonna go wander through the, the collection here. I haven't really even started yet. I just walked in the door. Um, so this is in Kearney, Nebraska. If you guys wanna come check this out, it's actually connected to the Cabela's building and that's how I found it. Um, so we're just gonna start wandering around and I'll give you guys a little bit of commentary here and there. But mostly I'm just gonna show you guys the vehicle. So stay tuned. All right, let's check this out. I'm not exactly a Corvette genius, but I think the original body style like this one, the beginning ones, had a V6, didn't even have a V8. Yep. Blue flame inline valve in head six cylinder, 235 cubic inch. But that was plenty of power back in the day. Got a Shelby GT350. Ooh, it's actually got signatures on the dash. Carol Shelby will take a look at that. Yep. Carol Shelby. There's a lot of stuff in here. Ooh, split window. Pretty rare for you guys that don't know. I believe it was only a year or two that they actually had the split window. Yep, sp the split window was only produced in 63. So that's a rare bird right there. Oh, it looks like old boy's car off Dukes of Hazard, if I'm not mistaken here. I also, <clears throat> I'm probably wrong, but I think these were front wheel drive. Yeah, Boss Hog. Nice the engine, wheelbase. Yep, front wheel drive. Second generation of the front wheel drive Eldorado. I knew it. And so, even back then, they were starting to make them front wheel drive. This is a 1971. It's front wheel drive. It's crazy to think. Avanti Studebaker, if I'm not mistaken. Yep, Studi. I've seen a few of these out on the road. It's pretty rare to see, though. It's crazy. It's the mirrors. That's a cool car. It's Merc. 
turnpike cruiser. Riviera, Buick Riviera. Remember, I remember those on the roads as I was growing up. That's not terribly old. It's probably about the same age as me. I'll get the see what the year on this is. 83, it's a year older than me. Um, it's something that you guys can kind of tell, maybe. If you look at the surround on the window here, a lot more of your typical cars are gonna have a surround on the window like that, on the driver's window. Now look at this one, it's all smooth. It's just a simple touch. Even the cowl, cowl right here, completely covered you don't see the windshield wipers or anything they hide underneath whereas everything else they're typically on the outside and you have these vent panels and stuff so if you're not a car guy you'd never notice that but it's pretty neat like even the drip rails on the roof even the drip rails are not at, like up outside they're right on top of the windows you can barely see them like most of your vehicles are going to be like that, the older ones where the drip rail is really pronounced up there. So, I mean, it's nothing, it's not a crazy vehicle, but it's really, I don't know, they were cool for what they were. It's like a little drive-in theater. Be nice if you could sit in one and watch. So we've got this cool little spot here and it's kind of set up like a drive-in theater. Uh, they've got like a little ticket booth. You can't sit in the cars or anything, but it's neat to see with the screen up there, although that's not even close to the size it would be. But for those of you people that don't know in Nebraska, uh, up in northeastern Nebraska, in Neely, Nebraska, there's still a drive-in theater that's open all summer, and you can go, go there and watch. Uh, you pay for your one ticket, and you get two movies for that evening. And I believe there is going to be another drive-in theater that's opening up in the Fremont area supposedly within the next couple of years but we'll see how that actually pans out but yeah if you want to go to a drive-in uh, go up to Neely uh, I'm sure you could find it if you google it I don't I think it's called Starlight maybe Starlight drive-in but I could be completely wrong it's been a couple years since I've been up there but yes there is still a functioning operating drive-in theater in Nebraska so go check it out oh that's pretty interesting Chrysler Airflow that's pretty rare I believe It's cool. Airflow because of how rounded it was compared to the other stuff at the of the time. I don't know what the year is. 1934. So that's pretty cool. It's got the suicide doors on the back. Yeah, it's pretty neat. Good, how are you? Whatever you want to tell me about. Okay, well, the, the car museum's been been here for nine years, and uh, we have about uh, 210 cars, 150 of them, what well, the, the visitor bureau owns, and uh, we have a lot of uh, older cars, you know, from, from about 1920, and uh, quite a few in the 20s and 30s, and some Model A's and some Model T's. Uh, we've got uh, a couple Pierce Arrows, a couple old Rolls Royces. We've got a couple Rolls Royces that are, like a, we have a 1960 Rolls Royce, and I think it's like a 64 Rolls Royce. We have a couple of, of Lincolns here. Um, well, one of them, if you can see the headlights in the front, when you turn the steering wheels, the, the headlights will turn with the car. The bottom ones there? Yeah, the bottom the bottom headlights, and I'll show you that. Let's check this out. As he turns the steering wheel, you get directional lighting. That's really cool. And that's, you see some of that on some, some newer cars where they'll move yeah. a little bit, but nothing like that. Uh, then we've got a dual cowl Lincoln that has a, a, a windshield for the back. Oh, yeah. 
for the back too. So you can see that right there, there's a separate windshield. You have two two cowls and you sit behind that second windshield, yeah. the passengers would. And, the, and then the cowl kit comes out. Behind the ropes. That scratch on it. It has the, has the cowl there. So is that, oh, that came up in your that, like, that, was, that will That will come up when you put the top up. Okay. I'll show you my car here. It's uh, this car here. This one came out of North Dakota and the uh, same family owned it till about 10 years ago. And then a guy from Kozad bought it. And then he, he didn't hardly drive it because he didn't want to put any miles on it because it only had 14,000 miles on it. And then another guy from Kozad bought it. He had a couple years. And then he didn't drive it because he didn't want to put miles on it. And I drove it I've had it had it in the museum here for a few years. Must be nice to have a nice climate controlled garage to park it in. <laughs> Absolutely. It. Uh, and of course we've got three retractables here. So these are hard top convertibles. You can see this one's still got the top up. But this one's got the top all the way down. And that one's in mid retraction of the top. So you can see the whole trunk lid pops up like suicide style, goes back. And then this flips down underneath and that goes down and sets in and the top comes back down. And I believe, uh, I believe, yes, you can kind of just barely see it there. So on the, that's on the trunk, that little piece as the trunk lid flips down after the top is retracted, that flips out. And that's like your boot cover that you would see on a typical convertible. But you can see this one here. Uh, you can just see the separation line on the roof, like right there where it would split here as it goes down. And if you wanna buy this one, it's for sale. There's the phone number, price. 58 Ford Fairlane 500 Skyliner retractable hardtop. top. 610 feet of wire in there for the top. Yep, it's all power. And we've got a prowler over here. So there's only a couple, like 1,200 made with that blue color on there. So, I mean, it's interesting to see. Did you want to see the inside of it too? Sure. Well, I can get behind the scenes here, of course. Yeah, it's a little close here. Now, Am I wrong? But they were never offered in a manual either, were they? I couldn't tell you that. I don't believe they were. They're cool vehicles. And then they could have added a rumble seat. You know what I mean? <laughs> I think it'd be a little short. Oh, probably. I got to show you something here when it comes to rumble seats. That's about, they don't even have quite that much surface no. in, on, the, on the prowlers, and that thing is small. That's cool looking. Yeah, that is really cool. I've but, never but seen but one with in, the little windshield thing yeah, that pops up like uh, that. Back in 1949, people weren't as big, no. especially in Europe, so, so that's got to, cool. it's, it's a really, this car's all aluminum, hand, everything's handmade wooden frame on it. That's crazy. And we've got the DeLorean over here. Yep. Did you want to see the inside? I'd love to see the inside. I've never been up close with one of these. You That's might want to just go ahead and sit in it. They, they are small. Okay, I gotta turn this camera around. I can sit in this. Alright guys. Oh yeah, if you just hold it just like that, I guess. I'll sit down here in this DeLorean. They are tiny. That's crazy. I don't know if I would even fit under there. Oh, just barely. <laughs> <laughs> wow, 
I didn't. You don't realize how small the inside is. You really yeah. don't. Yeah, you don't. That's cool. That is cool. Awesome. Uh, I didn't expect to be sitting in a DeLorean when I came here this morning. Uh, yep, the Back to the Future car. It's all stainless uh, steel. Yep. That's awesome. 10 horsepower. 44 cubic inches, 10 horsepower. 10 horsepower. Well, it needed that little propeller on there. Try to get it go faster. Can you spin that again for me? I didn't have the camera rolling. Look at that. And that was on all of them? Yeah. Oh, one. yeah. That was a little louder. That's cool. Were these like more of a European car then? Well, they're they're American made cars. Were they American made? Wow. Um, but they were a, a very low cost vehicle. They didn't have, I mean, you can imagine 10 horsepower. Oh, yeah. I mean, my lawnmower's got more horsepower yeah. than that. That's crazy. But they got. 40 some miles to the gallon. Yeah, people these days are still striving to get to that point. But nobody's going to drive around in a 10 horsepower car anymore. No, no, nobody's going to drive around in a 100 horsepower car. No, not, not typically. But it's, it was probably plenty good for driving around town. Oh, yeah. I mean, it's still bigger than those little smart cars you see out driving around now. Yeah, yeah. I've heard of the Bradley GT before. What was that? Is that a Volkswagen chassis? Yeah, that? that's a, that that set on a. They would take they would they would get Volkswagens. They take the bodies off and then they put these these bodies on. Mm -hmm. That's all fiberglass, right? Yeah. Yeah. And this car is really tiny too. Is it? Yeah, I have to show you. It's sitting in back. Where you where my head's at? Oh, well, you got to climb up over the side. Yeah. We drove it uh, down to the car show this year. I drove it down there. I bet this thing and shines And this is where my head light. comes from, oh, right over here. Look at that. <laughs> but, it, but it is fun to drive, but I just got to go like this. Yeah. To, and go over the wind, over the, the top there. I bet that thing is blinding out in the sunlight with all the flake in there. That's a cool it, car. It started raining and I got wet. Oh. Yeah, you definitely got to be in shape to get in and out of that thing. <laughs> That's cool. You don't see these driving around very often. In fact, I don't know if I've ever seen one in person. But this this car here is the one that that speed uh, a late 30s or early 40s, and I might show you something on this one. This is to pump the gas so you get more gas. Like, so when people used to race in the 60s, they'd come around that cor that curve and then they'd start pumping this to get it a little more gas. So in the straightaway, they'd have a little more speed. Oh, okay. Yeah, the safety regulations were definitely not uh, in place back then. Look at that header. That's nuts. But I guess Speedway has quite a few cars sitting in their buildings. Yeah, I need to and, go check them out. And uh, this is just a couple extra that we let them bring in, but we don't have room for any more. Mm -hmm. No, you guys are pretty full back here. Yeah, we're full. You want to see the rumble seat on this one? Because sure. you said you like rumble seat. Yeah, they're neat. I didn't realize how far underneath the, I guess it kind of goes under the whole seat there. Well, so if, you, if you look on the other side of this one, if you walk around, you can see. Oh, there's like a little storage compartment. Yeah, that you can get 
the golf clubs or they only say that little kids used to get in them too. And then you can see right up to the seat there guys. That's cool. That's it. So the LaSalle's, they decided that they wanted a, a, a little fancier car GM, something between the Cadillac, so that they started making these LaSalle's. And this is the first year, this 1927. And this 1927 is the very, very first year and not even the museum in Buffalo, New York that, that has the LaSalle Museum as a 27. Has one of these? Wow. And of course, this 1930 here, this one is an awesome car. This one's the next one here. We, we've run this one to some parades and stuff. I love that color. It's almost like got some green in it. It's like a blue green. It's, it looks more blue on the camera guys, yeah, but that's, that's got, awesome there's some green in that. I mean, look at the detail on this thing. That dashboard. What's that big switch above the steering wheel? Is that your... Okay, that, that's just a... Back, back then, the, the cars didn't have vacuum advance on their, on their, on their ignition. Okay. So you manually moved, up, moved it up so oh. that it would be retarded a little bit and then it would start each year. Okay. And then once it's running, then, it, then the spark needs to, to be sparking in an advance. Mm-hmm instead of a lot of the some of the old some of the first harleys the old harleys uh people don't realize that you have the gas on one side but the other grip is the same thing like that so as you start the motor you have to advance and, and retard the yeah the ignition yeah, that's what that's for just yeah. beautiful So it'd be a flathead V8? Yeah. Yeah. Hmm. And of course they had like dual side mounts so that if you had a flat if you had two flat tires when you're out traveling, you had an extra tire. Well, and roads weren't as near as nice back then. You're driving and a lot the of dirt. Near as good. No. This car, this car is a Jewett, and the Jewett is a really rare car. So he found it. Just the the body was pretty well rotted off. So he he made it into a Woody, so that we would have a a, a Jewett on display. And, hmm. So these were originally wood then, or were they? No, the, the cars were uh, actually, the, a lot of them had a, a oh, okay. wood frame and, a, and then metal, metal around them. That's as he was, he was restoring it. But when the metal rotter, when the wood would rot away, then the metal would just collapse, collapse on it. Yeah. I mean, the, the Model A Fords and stuff, they were, they, they were metal, but the, like the Chevys, they were, they were a wood frame with metal yeah. over it. Yeah, and there's a lot of you guys probably don't realize that if you're not into vehicles. A lot of the older cars were like that, and then like the, oh, like some of the, was it the old Model T's, like the top was kind of canvas, and it was a wood frame underneath yep. that and, and all that. Yep, and out. Then, then you were done. Yeah, <laughs> to replace it all. But you, you can see some of the cut glass. In, the, in this car. Oh, in the rear window. It's hard to see on this camera, yeah, you but. Can see the. Oh, the headlights. The headlights and stuff. Look at the lens on I mean, that. That's a really fancy car. Nash, yeah. Heard of Nash before. 
And you see how the tops were a little wider? That's to shed the rain. Off the sides, yeah, I mean, there's no drip rail or anything, so. So, so this, this car has 2.8 miles on it, oh. right here. So what happened was uh, this car dealer from Pierce, Nebraska, he, he would uh, have like five or six cars. Was this the or, auction that yep, was a couple of years ago? Oh, okay. Yeah. And he would have some pickups and some cars left every year. Instead of reducing his price way down, he would he start putting them in his building, in this great big building. Well, the building start falling down, so then he pushed them all outside. Mm -hmm. And some of them, he would he just they'd end up outside right away. So, so he had all these brand new cars. And yeah, I remember I think hearing there was about like this. One hundred fifty of them or something. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I remember it was a big deal and people were coming from all over. Yep. Yep, the Lambrex no, sale. And if you look, you see the exhaust manifolds, how they're, they're still, still painted. Still painted. Still they, they, the paint. It didn't even run long enough to uh, burn the paint off. That's crazy. I mean, some people would say it's a waste, but you're never going to find one with that low mileage unless well, somebody did that because we have people that come in here that have 50 mile chimneys and then they want to look to see how everything is see if there's an original some of, the, some of the, the books that tell you how to restore them aren't exactly like mm -hmm. this one so they 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 want to look at it to see exactly you know where everything's made at or and you know that, was that bolt the same color as the body or you know because yeah, you would never know that, you would never know and that's a big the, deal to some people and evidently when some of these restoration books have been written they're they're not they're, exactly accurate, mm -hmm. accurate or they're not exactly the same as this car right here mm -hmm. that's crazy so yeah and the guy said he's never going to start it just going to leave it to it Huh. Yeah, he's not going to start. I mean, I imagine the engine's going to take a lot of work to run correctly. The seals are all gone, and you start running stuff through that. I'll show you that one car. That, um, this little mess here, it's, it's a, called a kit car. And you can buy the whole whole car for, for $500 and some dollars. Or you could buy parts. You could, you could buy parts for like 20, $25 each. So some people would buy half the car one year and half the car the other year and then they put it together. Can I go back here? Yeah. Just fill me. And and one really kind of cool thing about this car. See the back? Oh see, yeah. Well, see, I've never seen a drive like that before. Yeah, and that's how, that's the, like some of the lawnmowers and some of the combines mm -hmm. and stuff. See you just Make it go faster, you know, by just getting it closer to the center. Yeah, That's and crazy. Are these locomobiles here? They're 500 and some cubic inches. That's big. But, but they're on. They're they're only like 50 some horsepower. See how it's got two spark plugs per cylinder. Yeah. Let's go. Another one back on the other side. Locomobile. Huh. See, this one's got. But I want to show you how small, uh, how small the seating area is. And this car costs like $5,600 new, and a mo Model T was uh, $350. That's a big jump. Oh yeah, like there's no yeah. room in there. Yeah, there's a, there's no room, but uh, I mean, and your steering wheel isn't adjustable, so you better be pretty. It's pretty tight getting in and out of there. But it is uh, the coolest car ever. I love to see all these old vehicles and how they had they had wood everywhere. I mean, even your firewall in there, it's wood. Now is that wood over over a metal panel, or was that no, is that yeah, the actual? That is wood. That's actual wood. 
that's a good sort of metal. But I, I never even thought about it. I know, I think it's wood all the way. Is it? But I, I'm not 100% percent big see, this is wood here. Mm -hmm. I think that is just one sheet of wood. Yeah, you, there's what, Morgan's the only one that's still using any wood, structural wood like that. But if you have a car that uses wood, they're a lot quieter. Well, it absorbs a lot of the vibration and sound, yeah. yeah. Um, this is the car that cost 10,000 years. This one was 8,250, but that would be like, Four hundred thousand. Mm -hmm. So is this more expensive than like the Rolls Royce of the time? Uh, I I would say so. Um, I mean that's a lot bigger than than most of the vehicles of that yeah, time. It seems yeah. like it's huge. But I mean when you when you consider a Model T was three hundred fifty dollars, this one was eight hundred. Eight thousand two hundred. That's a that's that's a huge difference. Mm -hmm. This is high class. They, they also had the patent on these headlights. Oh, so smooth. If if you notice that uh, a lot of cars didn't integrate their headlights until the forties mm -hmm. because they couldn't because this was this. The is that Arrow metal? The, is yeah. that fender metal? Is that yeah, all metal? That's, metal? that's all metal. That took a little bit of work to make. Well, they hand made it. You know, well, they, yeah. would, they would heat up metal and they would stamp it mm -hmm. and they would make it. I mean, they were, once they figured it out, they made enough cards. They got pretty good at it. Yeah, that's huge. See, this one's got the golf. Oh, yeah. Golf you can see the little golf club sticking out right there, guys. And then the little door and the rumble seats up in the back. This guy was, was in charge of a territory in England or whatever, and he specially ordered this this car, and he ordered it with the options he wanted on, on it and everything. That toolkit's pretty crazy under yeah. the seat. Is yeah. that that's an original thing? It was built mm -hmm. that way. Yeah, that's a, that's an original. And you might notice these seats. They have little jump seats, and, and, and the other, the other one has a jump seat in it too, huh. and they'll fold right into the floor. That's crazy. So yeah, yeah, no, you have like a big six down. passenger, or just a big limousine. And this car's got knockoff wheels on it and stuff. That's that's equipment to knock off. Mm -hmm. Knock off the wheels instead of taking. That so way. it's like. For those of you guys, yeah. it's like a big, you get a big nut thing or, yeah. or you can yeah. just use the hammer and it's just one big spindle and the wheel slides on then you put your big nut on there. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, I love this one. So, is it like two-tone or is that, is that black too? Or I just can't, I can't tell. Yeah, it almost I, looks I like a different color than the really package. Black. I think it's kind of a greeny black. Is it green? But for some reason, the hood and this is a little different color. A little different, yeah. But this is the one that I was telling you that it was considered, this one was said to be the best car in the world in 1960, this Rolls Royce here. Silver Cloud. Yeah, you just don't see the quality of woodwork in a vehicle nowadays, even though stuff that's got some wood paneling and stuff and nothing near the same. It's, uh, it's Beely, the grandson of the original John Deere that started the plow, wanted to make cars. So they made these cars for a number of years, probably 10 years or so, in some of the John Deere facilities. Oh, I had no idea. Yeah, 
and uh, 1909 to 1928, they so, produced Beelies. Not for very long. Yeah. Well, oh, actually, something else. That's got a different looking front end on it. Well, this is an air cooler. Mm -hmm. And of course, when they first started making cars, they had electric cars and all kinds of different stuff. But it wasn't until Henry Ford started mass producing the Model Ts that, that, that the gasoline engines really took over. That it was the normal thing. And if you look at right there, that's part of the wood frame. It's got an all wood, you can feel it. Oh yeah. But it's a wood frame on this car. Can you put the hood so, down? What's that? Could you put the hood down so I can so, see what that looks like? That's crazy so, looking. So this is a really rare car just because it had a wood frame and a lot of times they would get, you know, once the frames would rot up and they'd you'd be done. You'd be done with the car. Franklin Touring. I have never heard of one of these. It's interesting to see like that big scoop that's kind of on the bottom of the grill mm -hmm. there. It's kind of an interesting color combination. That's cool. Is that is the the firewall is that like held together with that strap to the body no, that, panel? No, that's just to keep it from, from the hood from rattling. From, okay. Yeah, the hood from, from rattling. Um, this, this car down here. One of the dealerships opened up in a, in a, I think it was Omaha in 1919. So they wanted to use this car when they had their when they had, had their 100th year anniversary so okay. we we loaned them this car and uh, that was pretty cool to have a that was a, last year last summer that we we loaned them this car and that was do you know what the dealership was since no. I like the red but they face were really right happy to get something that was 100 years old. All right, guys. So I hope you enjoyed the tour of the of the museum here. It was awesome to run into Al, who worked down here, and he gave me a little private tour, let me sit in a DeLorean, and I got to get behind the ropes, which a lot of people don't get to do. So it was pretty cool. Um, like I said, if you're ever in the Kearney area, stop in and check them out. So I'll link all the information, social media information down below in the description. And if you're in the area, come check out the, the museum. So if you enjoyed the video, give it a like. If you haven't subscribed yet, go ahead and hit that button. And uh, I guess stay tuned for the next adventure. I'll see you in a bit.